So we are gonna jump right in with getting with the posing. And um, the first thing we wanna do is talk about some quick tips, do's and don'ts. So Tony is gonna to kind of walk through each of our different categories. We are gonna start with classic physique and men's physique. If you are here from bodybuilding, make sure you use that chat. We need to know that you're here. Um, but he is going to work through just like we did last week with the bikini wellness and um, figure and talk about kind of some of the do's and don'ts using our pros and show off kind of little tips that you could make and really stand out for the judges. So, Tony, let's get started with classic physique. Well, all right. Hey, ladies, thank you again for, you know, providing this platform for everybody. Uh, you guys are doing great, great work for the DMV as well as the NPC and IFPB uh, professional league community. So thank you very much. And again, thank you for having me. Adam and Zelda, they're my side, they're my left and right hand today. So they're going to be chiming in on just providing a little bit of information or anything that I did not cover. But like you said, Corey, we're going to go right into classic physique. Let's talk about suits, okay? As far as suits for classic physique, uh, all the suits are the same. They're black in color, no different color, things like that. Actually, NPC News Online has a link uh, where you can go out there and, and purchase uh, your classic physique shorts, posing shorts. Uh, there are in the actual website or the URL is npc.wear, npc.wear, and that's, again, it's on NPC News Online. Uh, so, now, remember a few years ago, they had shorts that come down towards uh, the thigh area. Uh, some of the athletes are still wearing those and that's fine. However, we're moving towards the regular old school type of bodybuilding shorts. And again, if you go to npc.wear, you can actually see exactly how those shorts look. I mean, it's pretty simple, guys. <laughs> I mean, I've seen some people come out there uh, with some longer shorts in, in several shows. And uh, of course, we have allowed them to compete, but look, everything is out there. And also you can go to some of the uh, suit makers. They will make your custom, make your suits uh, themselves. Uh, as far as the men's physique suits, uh, they have, you can wear the shorts just above the knee and then one inch below the belly button. We noticed that when you start losing the body fat, the, the shorts have a tendency to fall down. And then when you hit that back pose, you have a tendency to show a little bit more than what we like to see. So you might have to get those shorts altered or anything like that. But when it comes to color um, and things like that, you can use red, blue, uh, you know, try to stick with the 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 uh, the stone color types of colors. If you have a, a pair of shorts and you want for someone to take a look and see, hey, how you like these shorts? Just flash a picture on your phone and see see what their response is going to be. And they're like, oh wow, but you might want to tone it down a little bit. Why? Because when you walk out there on stage, right? We want to notice you, but not by your suits alone, okay? Not just by your suits. Adam is an uh, IFBB Pro Men's Physique competitor. He came up through the race, got his pro cars. He's also a coach. Adam, do you have anything to add when it comes to the actual shorts? So what do you recommend uh, for your athletes? Um, I try to look at it as a fashion sense type of situation. So like um, going off the complexion of the athlete and also uh, the shorts that will go with that complexion. And it, you want to have something that gives a clear contrast and something that makes your skin pop a lot more. Um, I also don't tell my athletes to have too much designs. It's like a one color or more of a like one color wave. So if it's going from blue to light blue, that's fine. You know what I mean? But if it's a situation where it's blue, black and red and all these other multiple different colors, it becomes a situation, you know, and it takes away from your physique. I usually have my athletes choose between two waistbands um, when it comes to color, and it's either black or white. Um, in my experience, and just from a spectator and just visually seeing athletes on stage, it makes their waistline look a lot smaller or tapered if they're wearing a black waistband or a white waistband. That's a good and, tip. That's a very good tip, yeah. And when it comes to sizing, uh, another thing is a lot of guys are still kind of wearing baggy 
uh, kind of broad shorts and or board shorts. And I personally would like to showcase still the legs a little bit and it kind of gives them that X shape. So I, I ask them to get something that's more tapered or, or very like tight, not too tight, but at the same sense that it's really kind of showcasing their quads a little bit and giving them um, a fighting chance to have that full package on stage. And so they can showcase how small the waistline is and how uh, it can complement their legs, you know, and if you have a baggy shorts or any type of baggy board shorts, it doesn't really complement your entire physique entirely, even though the judges are not judging the legs when it comes to men's physique, in my opinion, but however, uh, it definitely brings the whole picture together when you have something that's more fitted and um, it's a clean look all together, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I can I can definitely agree with to that point. However, when when it comes down to the shorts, we definitely don't want any spandex out there. Okay? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> because I've seen I've seen a lot of gentlemen, like you said, Adam. They come out there and they have the shorts tailored. That it's a tapered look. It looks good. Uh, you, they definitely have that V taper going, and overall, it looks really good. But at the same time, I've seen a lot of guys that continue to pull down those shorts. Guys, that's a no go. <laughs> we 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 uh we as officials right we want to make sure that we everyone is on the same level as far as the suit is concerned the only difference is going to be your physique and your conditioning so constantly pulling down your shorts that's one of the things that we we definitely do not like to see okay i agree i agree with that too i've even personally got uh uh, deducted on points from Gary Uta himself when I for my first pro show was uh, the Baltimore Expo and uh, my shorts was a little too low and um, it, it put me in a different place in from that situation so yeah I, to piggyback that yeah definitely don't have shorts that's too low because it can really uh, throw you out of your place and, and all your hard work goes out the window. So uh, let me just Collection of the athlete and the sourcing purpose suits. Please uh, send that to Stacia so we can go ahead and clarify that. But Corey, is it all right to, to start moving towards the actual uh, positioning on stage, uh, diagonals and, and individual teams? Is that okay? What I, well, real quickly before we move on there, just touch on the grooming tips real quick before uh, you go on because those are definitely some questions people are always asking. Do you really need to shave everything? How important is it? Also, I think, you know, a lot of people are coming with more and more facial hair. Right. So if you could address kind of what the judges really think about that and how, again, as Gary always says, help us pick you. So exactly. what is the best thing to do? Exactly. And that's what I was just going to say, help us pick you, right? So for instance, if it comes down to uh, two competitors and they both have, you know, facial hair, okay? If you're groomed, if they, if they both have facial hair, they're both conditioned, everything looks good. They match it from point to point and then they both have facial hair. If one is groomed and the other one is not groomed, guess what? The one that's groomed is gonna get the nod, okay? The one who is groomed is gonna get the nod. So as far as shaving, my recommendation and what I have always done, everything leaves. Everything, everything is gone, okay? That's just my personal preference. Now, as far as facial hair and things like that, make sure it's well groomed, okay? We <laughs> We don't want anybody to come out there looking like Joshua, okay? <laughs> okay, I know you probably can't see it right, but we don't want a big bush, right? But if it's well-maintained, hey, look, let's go for it. Let's go for it. A nice cut. Uh, these guys, uh, these athletes, they get, they're getting very, very, uh, 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 I guess the word I'm trying to use is uh, the imaginative because when it comes to hair and grooming and things like that, they're coming out with some very nice styles. I'm telling you, everybody, everybody's looking really good and they've taken it up an, another notch uh, as, far as, I've, as far as I can see. So, so Tony, with that, we do have a question. Do men have to wear makeup on their faces as well as in foundation? I've seen, I've seen men come out there with foundation. It's not mandatory. It does not say in the NPC rules, hey, look, guys, you need to come out there wearing makeup. No, it does not say that. I've seen guys come out there with nail polish on the whole nine yards. You know, my 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 personal my my, my personal preference is to make sure you come out there. You want to bring attention to your physique. You don't want to bring attention to your makeup on your face. You don't want to bring attention to your nails and, and, and things like that, guys. You know what I'm saying? That should be subtle. Your, your, your suit should be a subtle look. Let your physique speak for yourself, 
Okay, let your, your let your physique speak for yourself. Um, as far as grooming, nice haircut, mustache, trim, or just no facial hair, that's fine. Uh, I was just uh, last month at the honor, an athlete walked up and said, Tony, what do you recommend? I said, look, you, he had facial hair. I said, look, make sure it's well, well groomed, okay? He came back the next day, he had everything off. So I mean, <laughs> I mean that's a personal preference. That's a, that's a personal preference. Uh, Joseph, I mean, uh, as far as grooming tips, do you have anything else you want to add? Um, I honestly don't don't recommend it, but again, everybody has their own preference. You don't um, recommend what? Facial hair. Okay. Yeah, definitely not. It's just, I mean, if you do for if you do, then like you said, make sure it's well groomed. Um, but I always recommend nice, clean shaved. You know, everybody it, at the end of the day, somebody's got to win. Exactly. Yeah. You know, somebody's got to win. You know, so. If you're gonna allow your facial hair to distinguish your place, or rather you want to not, let's say you and this other person is extremely close, like they can't dictate, they can't dictate who's better or who has the better physique. Um, if they have to decide on your on your facial hair that, that this guy's better groomed than you, then by all means, man, go for it. But it's the help me pick you. And so that leads us perfectly into right now, it is time to pick a winner of a sponsor. <laughs> So we're gonna turn it over to Victoria and let's award a prize here. Oh boy, that was intense. <laughs> and, I thought, and I thought females got it hard, man. <laughs> well, let's go right into our, into food. Um, today's been this whole month and two months, right? It's been all about food. Our wonderful sponsor, Non-Stress non Prep, um, based in Virginia, is giving away today seven meals from their signature menu. Seven meals are gonna go to one lucky winner today. And who is it gonna be? So you get to pick numbers one. We've got about 40 people between Facebook and our Zoom meeting. So one through 40, Victoria. Um, 39. 39, that would be Danae, who just joined us as our most recent guest. So Danae, if you could actually message me your contact information. I will make sure Victoria gets it and we can continue on this, Corey. Awesome. Okay. Well, we did have one more question come in as we we're following through Tony with some of those. If we could talk about tanning real quickly before we move into oh. the posing. Um, and one of the questions, so I'll throw the questions here is that, you know, with tanning, um, shaving legs, arms, back, stomach, and prepping for tanning. I know for the females, they definitely recommend that. Um, and then also just a little bit about the tanning. Um, you know, it's controversial for women, whether we tan our faces, but um, you know, if we could hear from the pros, do they tan their faces? I mean, that may eliminate needing makeup. Um, but if we could just talk tanning real quick, that'd be great. Okay. Um, as far as tanning, uh, there's the tanning companies that's out there. They, gonna, they normally send you a protocol. They normally send that uh, a week before your event. And with that, sometimes they send you some, uh, some things, some products to exfoliate uh, your skin. And what that does, it takes all the unnecessary oil out of your skin. The mistake is when you do that, and then you apply a moisturizer to your skin. So now you're defeating the purpose, okay? So what I've done in the past and what I've recommended is that you exfoliate the whole week before and leading up to the, the event. Well, you start exfoliating on Monday leading up to Friday when you get your first coat, okay? And what that's going to do, as soon as that tan, the first coat of tan that goes onto your skin or is applied, it's going to soak it in. It's going to soak it in so now you have a good base coat. As far as shaving, everything is gone, like I said before. Everything is gone. Uh, so that's my tip. That's what I recommend. That's what I found to be successful as far as the face is concerned. And I've seen a lot of athletes, especially our, especially our novice athlete, what happens is that you're tan from the neck down and you come out there and your face is bright as I don't know what. You know that when you walk out there, you're under these bright lights, right? So then if your face is does not have any type of color on it, it's gonna stand out like a flashbulb. 
So what I recommend and what I've done in the past, after I get my third coat of tan on, I might brush my arms, rub it in my hands, and just take it across my face and just spread it across my face. I found that to be successful. And then when it cut, as it comes down, I just blend it in. Okay. I would not recommend that you spray your face just like you spray your body. That's not, that's not going to be a good look. That would not be a good looking as far as a novice versus a seasoned competitor, you're going to stand out. You will stand out because as Adam, Joseph, you know, Hey, it's all about comparisons. And yep. when it comes down to the little small details and things like that, that's where the difference is. That's where you will see the difference between a novice athlete and someone who's experienced. Adam, what's your tip? I would like to hear from your side and also from Joseph because, you know, we have two, all, all three different types of skin, skin uh, tones. Well, right. and Tony, if I could add something real quickly yep. before you ask them, another quick question that they said is men of color is tanning still important? And I think, you know, especially because you just talked about that you tan. So I think you've answered that question. Um, but if you guys, when you're talking about it as pros too, just talk about what the importance is of, I think novice competitors that have darker skin don't think it's important that they need to tan. Yeah. Um, from my experience, I, I think tanning is extremely important. Even if you're, uh, if you have a darker color or a lighter color, it's just the amount of tan that you're using when it comes to your complexion. If you're a little bit darker then obviously it's like one coat type situation where it's just enough just to bronze you and highlight your definitions obviously if you're a little bit lighter you might need two or three coats just so that you can get to that same level of complexion um and even going back to the makeup situation i would personally get a tan from toe all the way up to neck and then when it comes to my face i don't tan my face i usually have somebody do like a slight bit of makeup on me and just to bring out the highlights in my cheekbones and also to kind of keep the same complexion as my tan so that I don't have a completely, you know, just white face or, or um, just different color face. So I want to make sure that it's all unison and all kind of one look as much as possible. Um, now, when it comes to like the makeup for men, you don't have to overdo it. It's just something slight like a what the makeup artist that I've dealt with, she just used a small little bit of complexion just to bring out my um, pigments a little bit more. And that's really much it. You don't really have to go the whole nine when it comes to trying to do makeup and things and such like that. Um, now, um, personally, I, I'm not sponsored by ProTan or anything like that, but I love using ProTan. Um, it works well with my complexion. It works well with a few of my athletes. Um, a lot of other competitors use some of the um, competition um, sponsored tans and that works well too. But Usually I like to use ProTan because the chemicals, in my opinion, work well. And I usually go with that, uh, even if, if it's do it your own or if the ProTan company is sponsored by the actual show. Um, I feel like it's a great company, in my opinion, that I utilize. Joseph, how would you feel about that? Like, what, what, what is your way of tanning and, and trying to go with that procedure? And like, even what a classic aspect of things, like, where do you stop the tan line at or what do you feel like you bring more color at when it comes to trying to showcase your wheels? Honestly, Adam, um, it all depends on your posing trunks. Like, if yeah. you decide, like, it, your posing trunks are going to define def depend on uh, how much definition in your quad you have. If your definition comes all the way up, then by all means, wear thin uh, posing trunks so that you can show all that definition. But if you don't have that definition up here, then wear smaller, I mean, a uh, longer one so that you can hide that 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 little bit that you don't have that definition on it actually you may place higher with that um versus you competing against somebody who actually does have that definition mm -hmm. as far as tanning um if you're wearing the smaller ones then i would i would tan the whole thing man because you don't know if your trunk is going to come up and then you're going to have that one really bright line there so you definitely want to tan the whole thing um as far as as tanning your whole body um even if you're a different skin complexion, I recommend everybody tans because it's very important because a lot of people don't have even skin tone, you know? And when you when you spray tan yourself, you're, you're evening your whole tone out. And not only that, man, it's gonna help your definition come out a lot more. Um, especially if you're, you know, light and bright like me, then you definitely wanna get tan at least three or four times because exactly. the lights on stage are so bright that when you step on stage, you're gonna wind up looking like a ghost up there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of definition is just, it's going to go away. So you definitely want to be pretty dark when you go up there. Um, 
What do you feel about like oil? Like when it comes to like getting glazed and stuff like that, do you feel like you highlight certain parts more or emphasize on certain areas of your body more when it comes to your upper body and lower body? I wouldn't emphasize certain physiques more. I mean, certain body parts more because mm-hmm. um, you may overdo it. It may it may look like you put too much too much oil on, but okay. I mean, wouldn't it depends on how dry you are because even when you put oil in your body, if your body's dry enough, it's still gonna soak up that oil. But you, you definitely know. don't. You definitely want to walk out there looking like a Christmas tree, okay? No, yeah. definitely okay. not. Okay, so a night, and normally at our shows, right? What we have, we have people backstage, job of touching up everyone and things like that. But I also want to touch real quick, Corey, on tattoos. Okay, a lot of us have tattoos now, um, and uh, as far as trying to work to try to cover that up, my 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 suggestion is let it roll. Everyone has tattoos. We do not mark down because you have a tattoo. Everyone has tattoos. So don't even worry about that. You will do, you will do more damage trying to cover up that, that tattoo than just letting it flow. Okay, Corey? Sounds good. As we move on, we do have one question that maybe you can address kind of as we're going through the posing that came in is how does the judging actually work? Um, so the judges score, the specific question was, how does the judges scoring work? Um, I'm not quite sure um, if that is, you know, is it the fact that, you know, there's five to seven judges on a panel and they all do the score and then it's tabulated. Um, so if that person asked more questions, that would be great. I'm sorry to uh, talking over you. Let me keep it real basic. Okay. So let's say that we have a head judge and then we have uh, there was going to be an odd number of judges, okay? And uh, so what happens is that if you have five competitors walked out this in a class, okay? So that means that the judges are going to score them from one to five, all right? The head judge is controlling not only the athletes on stage with the assistance of the expediter, but also the judges themselves, because what's happening is that the head judge is moving the athletes around at the same time receiving uh, comparison or competitors numbers so they can actually get them to the, uh, the athletes to match up uh, from, from one, one point to the other. OK, so uh, so what's happening is that once the head judge start moving the athletes around, then that's when the, the rest of the judges start making their determination whether, hey, look, Adam's going to be number one, uh, Joseph's going to be number two, Tony's going to be number three, whatever the case may be, and that's going to dictate your score, okay? We add up all those scores, and then the lowest number, obviously, going to be the first place winner, and so on and so forth. So that's keeping it very basic as far as how do, uh, what we're looking for, you, I mean, that's the criteria. And again, at the regional level, and when it comes to the actual NPC criteria, is not a lot of athletes that actually meet that particular criteria. So someone has to win. Someone has to win, okay? So you might find a situation where you have a men's physique athlete that's crossed over the class of physique and because of what's on stage he may win both classes and it's, it's just how it is but as you go higher in the different shows as far as the national level and then of course the pros then you you start to find that more athletes meets that criteria so that way you can start you know, really figuring out exactly who's uh, who's best, uh, the best one to win for that particular division. Now, I hope that answers your question, but I don't want to get into the the, uh, the the nuances of how do we judge. Very basic, if it's five athletes, the numbers is one to five, the judges uh, passes the numbers to the, the, uh, the head judge, and then we start tallying up the numbers and we figure out who's placing from one to five and the lowest number wins. Well, and I think that's a perfect lead in right now is that just remember in two weeks from now, we're going to have Gary Udit here. Um, Gary Udit will be a great person to talk about the judging, exactly the criteria and what they're looking for. Um, But as Tony said, someone always has to win. And so it is time for another sponsor. So let's pick another winner, Victoria. 
We will do uh, Ninja Vikings today, and um, and I'm I'm wearing, as I mentioned before, Tony and I are wearing their hoodies. They're brand new. They're amazing quality, and we're gonna have one lucky winner. And what is the number? Um, you are up to forty four now. So uh, let's go twenty one. Twenty one. Steven Tyler Pascal on our Facebook group. Hey. Yay. One of my guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Thank you. Okay, Tony, let's go ahead and get in. So uh, let's, as so we're going to use this joke here because Stacia and I always refer to as the girls. So let's have our boys get ready. Yeah. Um, so uh, <laughs> let's really, you know, take it into the posing and Tony, just like we did last year, last week, if you could also reference to, as you're working through with Classic Physique, and we do have some bodybuilders that are, have joined us now too. So going through and just kind of talking about a little bit, because we do have brand new novice competitors to the NPC. We also have those that are looking at national shows. And then of course, you know, I think so many people here, you know, a lot of amateurs are told, well, go watch the pros routines. And we know how much trouble that can get a newbie into when they're watching the pros routines and the pros routines are a lot longer than in the new competitors as they're stepping on stage for the first time. So as you're walking through with the guys, if you could kind of point out what we're looking for at the NPC level versus national versus pro level. Okay. So everyone kind of knows. So All right, take cool. it away. No, thank you. I appreciate that. So uh, you want to start with bodybuilding first or does it matter? I don't think it matters. I think as long as we just get all of them, we'll be great. Okay, so let's start. Yeah, let's start with bodybuilding first. So Joseph, if you can, if you don't mind, uh, to uh, be the athlete uh, going through the quarter turns and mandatories and things like that uh, uh, first. So uh, Joseph, if you can, can you please strip down, please? But while, he, while he's doing that, okay, while he's doing that, understand that when you are a, when you're an NPC athlete, uh, yes, it's good to look at uh, videos of the pros. Why? Because uh, when it comes down to transitions and things like that, guys, they, they have it down pat. I mean, that, and that's the biggest difference, one of the biggest differences that I see when it comes to uh, amateur athletes versus the pros, okay? Um, but right off the bat, um, so you can see Joseph, uh, you can see Joseph out there. Joseph, can you get into your relaxed, your relaxed stand? So as far as the NPC athletes, Hey, and, and please, people, when you, uh, as we go through this, understanding that this is for this, this piece right here is, is, is for our, our new athletes, people that, that uh, just get into the sport and things like that, understanding that there are some experienced athletes out there, relax, Joseph, there are some experienced uh, people out there, and they may have a different way just based off their success and their experience, okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, Joseph, when you first when we first come out there for bodybuilders, we're gonna bring you guys out on the straight line, okay? The on-stage expert is gonna bring you out on the straight line. We're gonna ask you to get into your relaxed stance. Go ahead, Joseph. So notice he's already flexing his quads first, all right? So the ones that weight. base, say what Adam? Said so Joseph got some width there. <laughs> so once he's established that base, right? Notice how his body transitioned to his waistline and then it flares out. He has very, very good balance. So right there, that's one of the criteria for class, I mean, for, for bodybuilding. You definitely wanna be symmetrically balanced, okay? Uh, and then what the head judge is gonna ask you uh, is to do a quarter turn to the right. Now notice from the ground up, right? Joseph has his legs together, right? Now what I've seen what I've seen is sometimes, based off your body, we may shift that right leg back, shift it back a little bit, bring it up just a little bit more. And so what they're trying to do, what they're trying to, no, keep it straight, there you go. But uh, what, what they're trying to do is just trying to show a little bit more width in their quads. But my recommendation is making sure that your toes and your head are facing in the same direction uh, as your feet, all right? So, uh, go back to your original stance for me, Joe. That you, no, back to you, quarter turn to the right. I'm sorry. Quarter turn to the right. And stay there. Yeah. Okay, arms to the side. Notice that we're looking at the abdominals. 
all right? And look how his V taper from his waist, how it flares back up to his V taper, okay? Head facing the same direction as his feet, okay? That's exactly what we want to see. Quarter turn to the right. Now, again, he has to establish his base. He has to establish his base. Now, sometimes I've seen or, 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 or practiced fanning out the quads when you hit the, the back stance, okay? Uh, you definitely want to keep your chest high because you have to understand that the judges are sitting low, okay? They are sitting low. So uh, you might have a tendency to, to uh, lean back just a little bit and to show that definition across from rear delt to rear delt, uh, arms are flared out, not in a bicycle stance. Hey, Joe, bring your arms up like you're riding a bike. Like bring them a little bit higher. Yeah, so I've seen a lot of athletes do this. And so we, we, we tell them, hey, look guys, you're not riding a bicycle, all right? So drop your arms back down to your side, but make sure you flare out your, uh, your lats. All right, Joe, can I get you the quarter turn to the right for me, please? Reposition yourself, establish that base from the feet up. Okay, head facing the same direction as your feet, arms to the side, chest up, controlling your abs, guys. This pose right here, again, when you turn to the left and right and you're at this position, if your abs are not in control, we will see it. We will see it. And that's one of the differences. Relax, Joseph. That's one of the, the differences that we see from the amateur ranks, our novice competitors. It's because they don't have that uh, uh, abdominal control or that pose. Uh, they're not, they haven't been posing enough in order to control those abs, okay? So that's the quarter turn. So real time, real time, this is how it's going to look. Okay, Joseph, get into your relaxed stance. I'm going to take you through the quarter turns real time, all right? So the athletes have just entered the stage. They're on the center line. All right, gentlemen, can I get you to do your uh, quarter turn to the right, please? Quarter turn to the right. Quarter turn to the right. And quarter turn to the right. All right, Joseph, relax. So that's how we're going to do it for the, the, uh, the amateur ranks, all right, for the NPC. Now, when you start getting to the, the, the national level, some of our bigger regional level shows, during the quarter turns, if we have a big class, what will happen or what, what I've seen has happened is that once we're in the quarter, when, when we're doing our quarter turns, I might say, okay, Joseph, set it up. Go ahead and get into your relaxed stance. <clears throat> All right, from here, I might tell him to do a front double bicep. Okay, go ahead and do your front double bicep. <laughs> Relax. Quarter turn to the right. Quarter turn to the right. Rear double bicep. Relax. Quarter turn to the right. Side chest. Oof. On the other side. Relax. Face front. And relax. So what happens is that when we have a lot of athletes, okay, and the judges need to basically get their scores in, get their top five or top 10 into the head judge, then that gives the athlete a little bit more time and also gives the judges a little bit more time to evaluate your physique. So at all times, guys, <laughs> once you step foot on that stage, you're being evaluated, okay? You're being evaluated. So that was your, uh, your quarter turns. Um, when you come out and then you'll do your individual routines. If you're at the national level and that's normally 60 seconds, you do not have to use all 60 seconds. 
Uh, I've seen a lot of athletes try to go into their, their uh, evening routines when they do that. But my suggestion for you, whatever poses you trying to highlight during your individual routine, that's what I would do, i.e. your mandatory poses, okay? Now, if you are experienced enough and you have a lot of different transitional type poses and you want to showcase that with uh, doing your individual routine for prejudging, by all means, do that. But what you don't want to do is do something that's going to get you in trouble. In other words, that you are not uh, experienced in doing it. It doesn't look good on you, okay? So mandatory is my new athletes that's, that's listening in. My recommendation is don't freak out about this particular round. Just stick with your mandatories and you should be fine, okay? After that, guys, we're going to put you on the diagonal lines and then we're going to bring you out for comparisons. And then all that is just, is just nothing more than your mandatory poses. Your front double bicep, side chest, and right now, Corey, is, is, do we have enough time to go through that? I know we're... Do we have enough time to go through that real quick? Yep, go ahead and go through that, and then we'll go through, we can move into men's physique, too, so that we've got that, and then we'll do a giveaway after that. Okay, perfect. All right, Joseph, let's go ahead and let's go through our mandatory poses real quick, okay? And then what I'm going to try to do, what I'm going to attempt to do is try to point out some of the, the key tips to the, to the different poses, because I know that we are limited on time, guys, okay? So go ahead and set it up. Set it up to your, uh, your relaxed stance. <laughs> Balance, guys, balance. We want balance, okay? Front double bicep. This pose right here, you can have your quads. He, uh, uh, Joseph moved his left leg out to the side. That's a good look. Joseph, put your legs together. That's also a good look for him, okay? So it's, I mean, that's something that you guys will, are going to have to play around with. Notice his elbows are a little bit higher than his shoulders. And what that's going to do is going to open up his lats a lot more, okay? Now, as far as the hands and things like that, uh, we definitely want to make sure that we uh, – go ahead and hit your front double bicep again real quick. You see how his arms and forearms are facing in? Everything is balanced, guys. Everything is balanced. Wheels are tight. Keep your wheels tight. Uh, abs are control. His lats are spread out into a good V taper. And he's looking straight ahead, relax. So one of the, one of the um, things that I see with this particular pose is athletes looking down or they're closing themselves in. Guys, if you, you wanna maintain good posture when you're on stage. If you start you know, leaning over and hunching over and things like that, that's gonna distinguish your look. That's, the, that's gonna make your look, uh, you know, it's not gonna be so favorable in other words, okay? All right, Joe, uh, from there, let's go to your side chest. Stay up straight. Yep, yep, yep. Look how you bring up his chest, okay? Again, look at his quads. Sometimes what I see is people leaning down a little bit too much to try to show that hamstring. Guys, if you lean down too much, that's, that, that's going to just... That, that is not going to help you out, okay? Try to stay tall. Make sure you keep your abs in. Uh, he's probably pushing down with his right arm onto his left wrist in order to pop that bicep, and he's making his midsection tight, and all the air is coming up to his torso to make sure his chest is full, okay? All right, relax. Side tricep. Very similar as far as the legs when it comes to the, uh, the side chest. Make sure you control your abs. And this is basically, this is also a good ab shot too right here, guys, because you got your midsection definitely being shown uh, from the side view. You want to make sure that, that you press down with the shoulder and also and pop that tricep, okay? Look at the balance. Okay, relax, face to the rear. I know, uh, Joseph, face back to the front real quick. Let's go to the front last spread. All right, from here, I've seen guys keep their legs together and also place their legs apart, just like you do for the front double bicep, okay? 
Yep, I've seen that look. Uh, hands into the waistline. Look at Joseph maintaining his, uh, his quads, okay? All right? Uh, air is going up to his upper torso to fill out that area and his lats, are, his lats are spread out, okay? If you do this pose right, you should fill it right up under your torso. You should fill it up in your uh, upper portion of your back as well, okay? Good job. Good job, Joseph. Face to the rear. Tony, you're making Joseph work. <laughs> this is, <laughs> hey, this is hard work, all right? All right, Joseph, give me a real double bicep. First thing, establish your base. Right or left leg is coming out slightly. You're bringing in your glutes, your hamstring, arms coming all the way up. Come down, show that detail, and then flare out, okay? Now, for this particular pose, guys, you're gonna have to lean back. Why? Because we're sitting low. The judges are sitting low, okay? If you're standing straight up, you're gonna look straight up and down, okay? Your view is gonna look, your body's gonna look like you're straight up and down, but you wanna keep that beat tape. If you're doing this pose correctly, it's gonna hurt like hell, okay? It's gonna hurt, all right? All right, relax, face to the front. Oh, Joe, I'm not bad. I, I meant to do the real last spread. Okay, face back around for me. I'm sorry. Real last spread. To pull it in, Joseph. Pull it in. Let's start over, Joseph. Pull it in. Pull it in. Yep. Now open up. Chest up. There you go. Right there. Right there. You see the difference when I said chest up and see how that definition come in and, and his beat taper just popped just a little bit more. So what I've seen in the past, relax, Joseph. What I've seen is guys are just, you guys, you're not opening up. You're going to have to work when it comes to this posing. Yes, we all love to train, but I'm telling you, this posing is hard work, all right? All right, Joe, let's <laughs> I'm almost finished with your boss. I'm just He's a pro, right? man. He knows yeah, how to do this. <laughs> Adam's up next. <laughs> all right, let's go. Uh, let's do abs and thigh. Abs and thigh, okay? This pose right here uh, is a little bit awkward in the sense, it's a little bit difficult, not awkward, but difficult in the sense you're gonna have to balance your weight off that, that leg, that leg that's facing to the back, or that leg not facing to the back, but the, that rear leg, and then bring out the other ab, uh, the other leg, my bad. The other leg, yep. Let me walk you through it, it's a lot better. Let me walk you through it, okay? So okay. let's talk, let, let me walk you through it, Joseph, and, uh, Let's start with the uh, the base. Let's start with your base, your, your legs. So from the relaxed stance, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out your abs and thigh, okay? Abs and thigh. So now he's going to take a step out with one, one leg facing front. Now he's going to establish that base. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. So now that weight on that left leg, the rear leg, is going to be on the heel, all right? You're going to apply just a little bit of pressure on that front leg to make that leg pop. Now you can change your position with that leg, okay? Now, finish the pose. There you go, it was a delay, my bad. Okay, now hands overhead, elbows pretty close to the head, and then you blowing out. I mean, you blowing out really, really hard to bring in the serrats, the abs and everything, all right? The obliques, everything, all right? All right, let's finish this off with the most muscular. What? Most, <laughs> most muscular. <laughs> we got this, boy. Let's go. <laughs> All right, yeah. cool. I'm glad. I'm glad you faced. Uh, I'm, I like. I'm glad you selected that because we have several most muscular poses. Uh, he's not covering up his uh, abs at all. He's standing straight up and down, and uh, definitely balanced. Good base on the wheels. Good, good symmetry in the uh, upper torso. Good job, Joe. Thanks a lot. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. I know you can't <laughs> give him a hand, but I mean that's hard work. He's already breaking out of sweat. <laughs> and Joseph has just proven what we have said that you have a home gym as long as you have a floor in your in your house. So he has proven. Uh, Joseph, before we let you be done, we've got a couple of questions wondering how far out are you from your next show or the show that you are going to be competing in? <clears throat> I was about six weeks out um about three weeks ago and i was going to do the pittsburgh pro but it got it got canceled because of the virus 
I think people are trying to figure out exactly based on your leanness and definition, just exactly how far you are out. Um, right now, right now, I would say I need about eight to nine weeks of prep to come in really lean. And, and while we've got him here, another question that came out is exactly how big does our classic physique competitors need to be? Obviously, Joseph is a pro, but would you consider yourself, Joseph, are you a bigger pro, a smaller pro? Like, how are you on the scale of size compared to the other pros? Um, I'm a smaller, I'm a smaller pro, but what separates me is my aesthetics, um, you know, small waist, V taper and proportion. You gotta have a complete physique. It really, in, in, in classic physique, it's not about size. It's about more proportion. Being able to display a complete physique, so to speak. Exactly. Yep. We're helping him work on his cardiovascular right now. So yeah. we're gonna turn it over to Victoria. Ooh. We're gonna do a sponsor. And uh, Stacia has just let us know that we can go over on time here. So that way we can uh, focus oh. on, you know, actually getting in the men's physique and, you know, some a different, Okay. variations with classic too. So let's turn it over to Victoria and let her award some, I don't know, is it meals? Are we at meals or cookies now? Cookies. Now, cookies. I think after Joseph's hard work, he deserved a cookie. Definitely. <laughs> okay. That was, that was a lot of hard work. So we have the OCD cookies based in LA. Um, amazing presentation. They work on their presentation too. And, and they're actually delicious. So awesome, you get to pick one through 45. Let's do nine. Nine, let's see here. Josh. Oh, there you go. He gets cookies because Tony was picking on him earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well deserved. <laughs> and back awesome. to you, Corey. Yeah, so let's, let's shift over. Let's give Joseph obviously a break and let's make Adam work now. All right, Adam, let's do it. Here we go. It's the fun part here. All right. So as you can see, Adam has on his men's physique uh, shorts. I mentioned it earlier. Uh, the only logos that's authorized on the, uh, the uh, men's physique shorts are the logos of the manufacturer. So just keep that in mind as you select your, 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 your shorts, gentlemen and you shouldn't have any problems. If you have a tailor to help uh, alter the shortness of tad uh, as far as the waistline and possibly the glute area uh, to show a little bit more uh, of your physique, then by all means go about doing that. But uh, that's basically it, okay? And while he's getting ready, um, when it comes, to, I'm gonna go back to Joseph real quick uh, in regards to the routines, okay? Like I said early at the national level e events, uh, you guys have about 60 seconds out there to do your individual routine. Of course, the pros, they have a lot longer than that. Uh, uh, real quick, my thing is uh, work on your transitions, gentlemen. Work on your transition from pose to pose. And when you get into your poses, no secondary movements because that's gonna tell the judges hey, this guy is not familiar with his body or not comfortable with his body enough to know that he's in the correct position, all right? So that's, that's where uh, we are going to have uh, some, some, some challenges and things like that. Uh, also, um, when it comes to uh, comparisons and things like that, when the judges call you out from that diagonal line, gentlemen, raise your hand, please. Why? Because it looks professional for one, and two, that alerts the judges that, hey, look, yes, we have combo with competitor number one, two, or three, and it also helps the rest of the competitors and the expediter on stage out with that. So anytime the head judge calls out your number, gentlemen, Please raise your hand, acknowledge, and then make the move, all right? All right, let's switch to men's physique. We have my man, Adam, on the scene. Adam, if you can, can you take a couple of steps back for me, please? Yeah, right there, right there. So for just relax for a minute. So for the uh, MPC ranks, what's going to happen, right? We are going to bring you out uh, on the diagonal line. So 
once we place you on that diagonal line, you need to get into a good position so the judges can look at your body, right? And assess you in a manner that best complements you. So Adam, if you can, can you uh, simulate being on the diagonal line? Take your waist and move and, and shift it to the right just a little bit more. Yep, keep going just a minute. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, right there. Yep, right there. Now, uh, when you're on that line, guys, what we're looking for, okay, definitely looking for balance, right? But I'm going to tell you, for men's physique, you need to be tight. You need to be tight. Look, as you can see, you have on those board shorts. So we're not, we're covering up a lot of your physique. But that upper torso and from the knees down, guys, you need to be conditioned. All right? So you're going to have to suffer. So you see Adam, he just changed his spot, right? He just changed his position on that diagonal line. And that's fine, guys. If we have the room on stage for you to take up that space, by all means, and that and that particular stance compliments you, by all means, let's do it, all right? But you also need to play around with the different stance. Uh, Adam, go back to your original stance for me, please. Okay, now, just look at the lines. Just look at the lines in general, okay? Look from the waist, and then just follow the lines, okay? Just follow the, follow the lines of his physique. And you see how it flows right into his laps and how everything else spreads out, okay? Now, if you're on the other side of the stage, then you would just basically switch hands or switch arms. You can, yeah, you can go there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a good look. That's a good look. You can even do that, okay? But at the same time, guys, you need to understand that we, as official, we are critiquing your physique as soon as you step out there. Now, one of the do's and don'ts that I see on this, uh, uh, when we're at this portion and lining up the athletes, is that the athlete is losing their composure or their poise on stage. And so what's happening is that they're doing a lot of movement <laughs> they're doing a lot of movement on the diagonal line or they can't get into a good position to showcase their body. My suggestion for you is to find a good stance that complements you and stay there and stay there. Now, if you started cramping up a little bit, then make subtle, subtle changes and then go right back to it. But please, what we don't want to see is someone to continue to constantly move up there on that diagonal line because the judges, what they're saying is that, what they're saying to the head judge, can you please tell number 22 to stop moving? Okay, that's what they're doing because they are trying to assess your physique. Now, let's move on to your individual team. For the purpose of this demonstration, Adam, you're going to be competitor number one. And then once I call you out, just acknowledge the judges and then you come out and do your individual routine, all right? All right, number one, please. Acknowledge, set it up for me. Bam. Ooh, Adam, who's? <laughs> Joe's a messing with you, man. <laughs> There's your time, all right? Now for the amateur ranks, right, we have a front and a back stance. So you guys can come out like that. Now, Adam, now place both feet on the, on the straight line and face front. So that's your front stance. Now transition to your back. And transition to your front. Okay, relax, uh, relax. So for the amateur ranks, right? For the NPC, guys, you have 10 seconds in that box. Uh, we're gonna call you out. Number one is gonna be acknowledged. He's gonna come out, he's gonna go to the box. The head judge is not gonna tell you to start. Once you get into that box, you are going to start your individual routine. You got 10 seconds to do that routine. So my recommendation 
is to come out there, acknowledge, step out to the box, hit your front stance, one, two, transition to the back, one, two, transition to the front. Okay? Now you can do a slow one, two, three count transition. Set it up, one, two, three count transition, and then finish it off. All right? So real time is gonna look something like this. Adam, if you can, please, because you go back to either diagonal line, I'm gonna call your number out, and then I just want you to come out and do your individual routine, all right? All right, number one, please. NPC or IFBB? NPC. Okay, perfect, perfect. I feel like so, I need to give y'all music. Say what? <laughs> I feel like I, I need know, to give y'all right? music. It's so quiet. I know, like right? <laughs> so, so now, guys, this is what I wanted you to key in on. For one, his poise as, as he came out. Guys, you cannot have a conversation. We all know you cannot have a conversation with the judges. So in other, in other words, the only way Adam is going to have to the only way Adam has an opportunity to communicate with the judges is the, is the way he's coming out. Now, he acknowledged by saying hello to the judges by raising his hand. He came out, gave, uh, went into a good front stance. That's the beginning of his story. He started transitioning from, from, to, from uh, front to back, from back to the front. That's his story. And then he's going to say, hey, goodbye, judges. Thank you very much for your time. So he's basically telling a story with his physique. So he has a start, a middle, and an end to his presentation. Again, real quick, Adam, can we do the NPC individual starting from the diagonal line? Each side, it doesn't matter. I'm going to call your number out. And, just, and this time, everyone that's viewing, the only thing I want you to do is look at the flow of his presentation. He's not spending too much time on his front pose. He's not spending too much time on his back pose. And he's definitely not doing a double bicep in between his transition to a side <laughs> tricep, all right? <laughs> all right, so Adam, uh, let's go real time, all right? NPC style, uh, competitor number one, please. Perfect. And then you back on the diagonal line. Now, Tony, I have a question. Yes, sir. Does it, I know in women's bikini, they recommend that whenever they wave, they wave with the hand in the back. Does it match with men's physique also, which hand they wave with? Yes, uh, we, 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 we say that. Why? Because we really don't want to see any nasty armpits. Right, right. Exactly. A lot better, okay? <laughs> All right? To be honest with you, okay? So, yes, Joseph, you're, you're dead on when, when it comes to that. So same thing with the guys. I mean, you know, no one wants to see that. So whatever uh, best fits you as far as once you come out of that back pose and you get ready and you're getting ready to move back to the diagonal line, that's exactly what we want to, that's exactly what we want to see. But again, Adam transitioned very smooth, poised, confident. Okay. Uh, the timing between the front to back flowed very well. Amateur athletes, guys, that is something that we all need to work on when it comes to men's physique. Now, what we're going to talk about is the pro individual routine. Oh, let me, I'm sorry, let me back back up now uh, to the comparisons for the NPC. So let's just say that Adam has a person, Adam, once you stand right there in the middle, and we have a competitor simulating a competitor on his left and right, okay? Gentlemen, this is how it's going to look. I'm going to call our competitor number one, two, three. They're going to come out to the center line. He's going to take over, and he's going to say, gentlemen, could you please face to the rear? Okay. 
German face front. Again, we're simulating that Adam has competitors to his left and right, okay? Relax. Now, when it comes to your comparison round, gentlemen, uh, uh, we have a tendency to start closing in towards one another, uh, thinking that, hey, I need to make sure that this, the, the, the judges see me. If the onstage expediter puts you in a spot, then you stay in that spot. When you start moving closer or moving out of your designated location, in my opinion, that lets the judges know that you're not aware of where you are, okay? Everyone can see you, especially if you are on that straight line, okay? So my recommendation, if you start having competitors who are getting close to you and you start touching elbows, uh, respect the stage, respect the NPC and just move back out to your designated location and then let's keep it going. Because this is not a contact sport, guys. By no means, this is not a contact sport and you can be disqualified for a physical altercation, okay? So please keep that in mind. Please keep that in mind. So with that said, let's go into Adam. I want you to do your, your IFBB Pro League uh, individual routine. Now let's switch channels, guys. Let's switch channels to the IFBB Pro League. Again, you're going to come out normally for the pros. We'll line you up. We'll line you up depending on how many athletes. Sometimes we bring you out and we, we'll, we'll turn you on the straight line, and then you'll come back around, and then we will go right into our individual routine. So for the purpose of this demo, we're going to go right into your, your individual routine. All right, Adam, it's on you. Now, the only difference, thank you, Adam, the only difference that I saw is his transitions. And he did several variations to his front poses and his back poses. Why? Because when you're on that pro stage, you definitely have the luxury to do that. You definitely have the luxury to do that. Now, if I was a men's physique competitor and I went out there and you two, Adam Thomas, and I said, oh man, gosh, man, this guy's awesome. I like his routine, but I'm still an NPC competitor. What I would focus on would be his transitions. Because I could possibly pick up some of those techniques in order, in order to make my NPC presentation flow a lot better, okay? Now, Adam, you're a coach, all right? You're a coach, you have athletes. When it comes to your men's physique competitor who's competing on the NPC stage, what do you tell them when it comes down to your individual routine? What are some of the things that you as a coach, uh, you, sh you, you share with your athletes? I mean, honestly, um, when it comes down to the time, especially on the national stage, it's very limited, but I tell them to still do their routine because a lot of times, uh, the expediter would, or what they tell the athletes backstage um, and your routine should still be within like eight seconds, six seconds. Um, but the expediter will tell them, you know, we're going to be front back and front. And a lot of them freak out and thinking they should just change their whole routine and just do front back front. And I try to tell them just stay with the opposing routine that's already in that time frame of six to eight seconds and you'll still be doing your front back front. And a lot of times I try to emphasize that a lot so that they can still do their presentation and showcase the best of them. Because if you got to change it last minute, then, you know, you start to maybe stress out, water out, um, and then your body goes. And then at the same time, you're not showing the best of you. So a lot of times I try to emphasize them doing the routines. They already have practice. A good coach will already know the time frame you can do 
in a regional and a national level. And obviously in the pros is a lot longer. You can do in your routine, but six to eight seconds, that's all you really need and showcasing your best part of you because, you know, the best part about this is that um, with men's physique, it's not like classic. It's not like open bodybuilding where they're making us do quarter turns and we have to showcase everything. Men's physique, we can kind of highlight what's good about us and hide what's bad about us in a sense. And it's that all comes down to transitions and it all comes down to your posing in a sense. All right, thank you for sharing that. Uh, also, I want to go back to the portion where you mentioned that the expediter will tell the uh, look guy, like, I just want you front back because we do that all the time. Yeah. All right, we do that all the time. But that's guys, do not take that to mean to change your routine. We say that only so you can be conscious of the fact that we only have 10 seconds. Make it happen within that time frame. By no means change your routine because we do not want to make you feel uncomfortable. Right. <laughs> That's not our goal. At the same time, we You'd have- you be surprised. A lot of people get uncomfortable from yes. that statement set alone. Yeah, so that's not what we're trying to do. However, if your coach is telling you to walk back to that center line and then walk forward, I can tell you that that's something that we do not want to see. And that goes for a men's physique competitor, a bikini competitor, or a figure competitor. When it's time for you to do your individual routine, especially at the national level, and we ask you to go to the center box and do your routine. We're not asking you to take a detour to a center line and then walk forward. And the reason why, guys, we do not have that luxury on time. We do not have that luxury on time. So therefore, we want you to go straight to the box, handle your business, and then move out. Adam, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Okay, Corey, back to you. Okay, so I think that is the end of our questions. We don't have any other questions coming in, but one of the things that we did want to highlight is that both Adam and Joseph are coaches. Um, so we will be making sure that you have their information if you'd like to reach out to them. Um, they are local to the Virginia and Virginia Beach area. So they're out that way. Um, with that said, Tony, just one last question we will ask is, what is the importance of having a coach um, in terms of getting ready for the NPC and also, what should our competitors be looking for when they are finding a coach? Um, do I think coaches are important? Trainers are important? Heck yeah. Yes. Uh, I think they <laughs> add a different view when it comes to look at, assessing your physique because if it comes down to you trying to meet what the term nowadays is called micros, okay? <laughs> All calories are not the same. Let's just talk about nutrition. All calories are not the same. So if my coach tells me, Tony, I want you to eat eight ounces of chicken, you know, a cup of broccoli and a quarter cup or a third of a cup of, of rice or whatever the case may be, or a half a potato, he's, he or she is telling you that for a reason. Why? Because they have your best interest at heart. They're trying to bring you in to that event in the best shape possible. So you as an athlete, your only job is to follow that menu. Follow that menu. So is it important to have a coach? Yes. Is it, a, is it important to possibly have a uh, opposing coach? Definitely. Why? Because if you look at a mirror, if you're trying to pose and you're looking straight at the mirror, that's going to give you a different view. And you're going to go back to a comfortable position when it comes to posing, whereas that may not be the best pose for you. So you have, an, uh, you have, a, you have a person looking at your physique, assessing you and say, hey, look, why, instead of keeping your legs together, why don't you move them apart? Because that looks a lot better on you. Um, I think it's very, very important to do your research when it comes to trying to determine who you want to hire. Now, there's a lot of people out there. and We all know they are. We have people that that's been in the game for a long time. They have fruit on the tree. You can go out there, look at their website. You can see what type of athlete that they produce on show day. 
I'm a conditioning buff. I always would fa favor the conditioned athletes. That's just my personal preference. I don't care how big or how small you are, but if you in shape, you definitely would get a look. You definitely would get a look if I'm sitting on the panel. However, depending, uh, picking or selecting the right coach is very key. Again, do your due diligence at least. If they coming out charging you an outrageous amount of money for a short amount of time and they only uh, have trained two or three athletes, that's not a good sample size. And because someone wants, want, has won overall in a regional level event and they are a first year competitor, doesn't make them an expert on uh, coaching someone. It takes a while for us to learn our bodies. I'm still learning what I can and cannot eat. All right? So that's my suggestion. Have I ever been a coach? Opposing coach, yes. Have I helped people out you know, with their nutrition? I will be the first one to tell you I'm not a nutritionist, but I know what to eat. Do I know when to eat it for myself? Yes, but for telling someone that, I would not do that, okay? So that's my advice. That's, that's my advice. And uh, you can ask me that five years from now, and I will tell you the same thing. Like I say, and I tell people all the time, even coaches have coaches. So yeah, exactly. You know, in this industry, exactly. everybody, it, everybody has somebody they talk to. So Adam's a coach, and his coach is out in Cali. Yeah, my all coach right. is in Diego. He still reaches out to me, make sure, like I, like I was saying before, he makes the green light to let me know if I can do a show or not, you know, and and it helps to honestly, especially in this realm of bodybuilding, you need somebody to be that second set of eyes to make sure you're doing the right from wrong, you know, because we can have body dysmorphia and overthink things and think that we look good or look ready when we're actually not. And, you know, that coach is there to go ahead and push us to that next level in a safe manner, you know, and it's really important to have somebody as a support group to make sure that you're going in the right path so you can be your best. I mean, it's just like I compare bodybuilding to boxing you know, or, or hip hop or music, you know, you need a producer to make sure that everything sounds good while you're trying to be the artist. You need um, a trainer as a boxer to make sure that you're up to speed on everything so that you can go ahead and win your match. So you need that, that team to go ahead and keep you in the right direction to be successful. And just doing it by yourself kind of just makes you lose yourself in the game and in the process of trying to be successful with it. I, think I mean, pros, you know, look at, look at, look at Kai Green, look at Phil Heath, look at all them. Everyone has a coach. Yeah. I think you said operative word, uh, uh, Adam, a team. It takes a team to do this, right? It really does. I mean, you got to have a support crew. You have to have a nutritionist. You have to have a posing coach, a suit maker, a hairstylist. I mean, you have to have someone to talk to. I mean, you, you need all of this, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, guys, you know, those of you, those of you who are listening in and getting into this sport, please understand there's a lot of resources out there now and this platform so you want to compete platform they have information for you so my suggestion if you're seriously contemplating on doing this thing uh that we all love you know do your research just don't start throwing money out there talk to people i mean get information so you can make the best decision because you only have one body you only have one body all right, so you know you try to make the best of the situation. All right, that's all I'm going to say about that. Corey, back to you. I have one thing real quick, really say like on that situation. Um, you know, utilizing and doing your research as a finding that right coach, and make sure that you're fully mentally in in the game of competition because a lot of people would the, anybody who's first time doing it, yeah, have fun with it. Love the fact that you know you're competing and showcasing your best self. But after you take that step of just getting your feet wet, you know, really understand who is your coach and what's your coach's goal for you, you know, and really trying to get you to that next level. Because um, even if you just have passion just to be on stage or have passion to be very successful in competition, you know, you need that person to really guide you with that. And just really seeing how a lot of competitors who are successful had somebody to push them to that next level in that corner with them. So, yeah. So, and I was going to add too, and I know Tony sees this all the time because I'm backstage a lot of times, even the pros get nervous. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Even the pros get nervous. So for all those new competitors out there who are stressed out about being on stage, 
I've been backstage when Corey's getting ready to step on stage as a pro. I've been backstage with, at some of the pro shows. Those pros are just as nervous half the time as some of you, as some of the new competitors are. So that's all that I wanted to add in is just breathe when you're back there. All are human. We all are human, all right? You know, we all just elected to do this sport. <laughs> yep. You know, so let's get it. You know what I'm saying? So what do you have next, Corey? So we are actually at the point where we are going to wrap up. So one of the things that we want to remind everybody is if you go to our website, uh, so you want to compete.com and Stacia will put in the letters. Cause if I put in the letters, I'll probably screw it up <laughs> right now. I think I could see it. S Y W two C.com. If you go on the front page, scroll all the way down to the bottom, click right there to send us your email. That'll get you all the updates for everything that's coming up. We send out a weekly email every Thursday that lets you know who's on tap and who's coming after that. Um, we also have some bonuses in there. Um, we've got your show day uh, checklist that's in there. So we've interviewed some of the best in the industry and put that in there. Um, we've also got a little plug in there too. That's kind of goes down the breakdowns of what it costs to compete. So if you're new and you're looking for that, that's a great way. If you are watching this and you are not a member of our So You Want to Compete group, make sure you go in there and join the group. Um, everybody here is a member of the group, but you've got judges, you've got promoters, you've got NPC athletes, you've got IFBB pros in there. So it's a safe space to ask questions. Um, then the other thing we ask is that the So You Want to Compete Facebook page, make sure you like that as well and share it. And I think we have one final giveaway um, that we're going to do. So one last sponsor thing. As a reminder, next week, we've got Mike Davies. So Mike Davies and I, I'm just going to share a little bit. Mike Davies was my coach back in 2004. So this is funny. Mike Davies is coming next and Gary Udit is after that. In 2004, at my national show, Gary Udit came up to me and he said, I see real potential in you, but I think you actually need a real coach. And he introduced me to Mike Davies. So this is just brings it full circle that Mike Davies will be on next and then Gary Udit after that. Um, but Mike Davies has been in the industry for 20 plus years. Um, he's going to talk a little bit about home workouts, how to stay in the game while you're at home, um, kind of talk about the nutrition as well. So you're going to really have to be honest about what you're eating. Um, but that's up next week. So I encourage you share this, share the information. If you've got a friend that's interested in competing, but with everything going on right now, it's like, I don't know if I could do this, share the information. Um, everybody on this call, we love to give back and we're all here for you. Um, so Victoria, let's um, let them know how they can win their next prize, which is a really great one. What an amazing um, event we had today. It, we spend almost hour and a half on, on posing and, uh, and uh, discussing the competing for men. And we thought that women comp competing was um, taking a lot of time, but um, it's never endless process. All, always a lot to talk about. And again, thank you so much for everyone who joined. Thank you all our sponsors. And actually we have somebody who tuned in all the way from uh, Canada. One of my friends from Facebook tuned in from Canada. So thank you for doing that. And our last and final giveaway will be actually from Adam, um, who has um, who is a coach. He has his uh, apparel design company, and it, the name of it is Diesel Sports. So Adam, back to you, and good luck to the winner. So um, I'm giving away from my active work company, Profit Athletica, Profit Athletica uh, track hat um, free giveaway to whoever is listed on the participants that we have today so okay, cool. Adam pick a number between one and 42 uh let's go with nine nine let's see here Antonio Stevens there you go there you go so Antonio you want a hat you need to message me your contact information and I will make sure we get that over to Victoria <laughs> awesome thank you I appreciate it it's awesome <laughs> thank you guys <laughs> so much for joining us um, it has been, we did do about an hour and a half today, which is awesome. We got some great posing things. Join us again next week for Mike Davies. And if you have any questions, I will be posting the YouTube video later this afternoon. And you can always ask questions like Corey said in the Facebook group. So Tony, thank you for joining us. Adam, Joseph, thank you for getting an extra workout in today with the posing. <laughs> you can blame Tony on, for all that. <laughs> I'm going to work out right now. <laughs> yeah. You always have my back, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thank you very much you guys have a wonderful weekend and stay safe you too